Well, the U.S. economy expanded at a slower pace than anticipated in the third quarter, but the manager of a five-star rated fund is betting on a stronger-than-forecast economy for us all next year. Sandy Pomeroy manages the Newberger Berman Equity Income Fund, which ranks, we should know, among the top 3% among mid-cap value funds over the past three-year period. Uh, so our viewers and listeners will be definitely interested in, in some of the picks that you're making now. We're finishing a heck of a decade, the worst for stocks and bonds since 1900. So with, the, with that under our belts, going into this new decade, what is going to provide the leadership from your point of view? Yes, you brought out a very interesting point. Equities have just come off the worst decade that they've ever had. And in, uh, in, in contrast, money has just been flowing into bond funds, and bonds have had the best 20 years or more than they've had. And, uh, and we think that creates an opportunity uh, for equity income and for stocks in general. Uh, you can get a better yield in our equity income fund right now than you can get in bonds, um, even going out very long duration. But you also get the potential for the appreciation of the stock market. And we think the stock market is uh, reasonably undervalued here. We see the opportunity for better growth and better earnings ahead. Now, looking at your, the allocation of your fund, which you, it outperformed 97% of its peers in 2008, not an easy year to, to outperform in, um, you had about 21% in corporate bonds as of October and about 70% in equity, the rest in, in cash or other. Are you bringing that corporate allocation down? Yes. You know, that was a, a, an opportunity that presented itself in the fourth quarter and first quarter of this year where we really were able to take advantage of all the displacement that was going on in the convertible bond market. It was a fantastic opportunity, almost sort of a once in a decade type of opportunity to buy convertible bonds at pretty big discounts. Mm -hmm. So what we got was the uh, narrowing of corporate spreads and so we got the appreciation from that and we got some equity kicker because the underlying equities did much better. But we think the opportunity now lies more in other uh, stocks that are good dividend yielding stocks but yet you know don't have the protection necessarily that a, a convertible bond has. So with that cash having or those profits having been booked what are you buying in the equity front? I'm looking at, at your breakdown of, of top holdings as our viewers just were on uh -huh. the screen there. Some familiar names Cell Energy, uh, Progress Energy. What is Philippine Long Distance Telephone? <laughs> it's a long distance company in uh, the Philippines. We actually like a lot of the emerging market um, stories, particularly on the telephone utility front. We think AT&T and companies like that in the U.S. aren't quite as interesting because they don't have the growth potential that you see in the emerging markets. Mm -hmm. So the Philippine Telecom gives you the opportunity to get emerging markets growth, but in something that's more of a state, you know, traditional utility that has a very good dividend yield. Also, the government in the Philippines relies on the dividends from Philippine Telecom to help fund some of its uh, operations. So we're confident that those dividends are going to continue. Interesting. So a lot of the other top holdings here, they're, they're utilities, they're energy companies, but they're primarily domestic. Uh, yes, but I'd say about 25% um, or a little bit more than the fund is in international. Um, we continue to see opportunities for better growth internationally, and we think stocks still look somewhat cheap internationally. One area that we're very enthusiastic about is Canadian Income Trust here. Okay. Um, they are a way to play energy, which we're also bullish on, uh, but also have uh, outside the U.S. exposure, which will help in a weaker dollar environment. I want to ask you, you, inflation concerns are rearing their heads. I mean, you're seeing that reflected right now in the spread 10 yeah. and the twos. Um, but gold has actually performed really well over the past decade with those inflation concerns out there. Are you allocating at all? To yes, we are, actually. Yes, you um, are. We are allocating both to commodities and also to gold. We've chosen to play gold through some really high quality gold royalty companies like Franco Nevada and Royal Gold. Mm -hmm. uh, these companies uh, have a great um, operating story because what they do is they benefit from the rising price of gold, but they don't have the operating costs that a mine would have or a typical miner would have. So you get a lot of the appreciation that you get in the gold price, but you don't have the risks on a mine-by-mine -mine basis as much and also not the cost structure risk. Okay. We do have to go, but a lot of people skeptical about whether dividends will, will be continuing. You think they're safe at this point? Yes. In fact, I think that that's the real story here. Inflation um, is something that we think is a concern going mm -hmm. forward. We think the equity income fund offers you the opportunity to get um, some dividend growth, which mm -hmm. is going to be an offset to uh, inflation in the future. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sandy Pomeroy of Newberger Berman joining us here in studio.